They're guys. They do magic. Magic! They are the magic guys. We're back. The magic guys are back. All three of us. (sighs) Back again. The ritual. Yes, liquid fool. I managed to get mine just in time. I still don't have any. Oh, brother. I have liquids. We're going to have to fix that. You know, keep in mind, it's what? It's nighttime here. I'm an old guy. I'm not drinking liquid fool at nine o'clock. Oh, you got to be. Stat no. spoken be. like a true weakling, like an amateur. <laughs> <laughs> I'm anything but that, sir. I am not opposed to doing uh, hardcore things. Just you know, not, a, not, a, not a, a Monday at night. I've had my days. He, Love it. He's always, he's always carrying a little Tupperware container and a key. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> There's no Whoa. keys, but I do have the Tupperware. <laughs> Ah, oh, holy Ladies crap. Ladies and this gentlemen, a very, very special episode today, a very special episode um, mm. for many for many a reason. And we have Hildebrand sitting standby. If you know who Hildebrand is, uh, TikTok, almost 600,000, I believe, on TikTok. Sweet. And uh, much like the other two magicians here, has no hair on his head, uh, except for on his face. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, it's Hildebrand. Hey guys, are you clapping? Is that just the applause? Yes, that was the applause. Welcome. You don't don't have to clap. We've got an automatic button that does. Well, I was joining the applause. Remember, it does it. It does it for us. It's. uh, I'm doing it with it. I won't stop doing it just because you said I don't have to. I'm gonna have to. (laughs) All right, now we're back. Doug, get yourself a Roadcaster Pro already, man. I'm sick of this. Jesus yeah. Christ. Oh, my God. <laughs> so what you've you just seen... thousand dollars Yeah. What you've just seen, Hildebrand, is our relationship in a nutshell. <laughs> the three of us. <laughs> I love it. I, I think more than anything, I'm more now interested in seeing how many drinks Doug can put back in one shot. Oh, baby. I can go. Yeah. But I just don't do it often anymore. Oh, That's because he can't go. But I'm still He's all <laughs> no, I think, no. Uh, one day I will prove that to be incorrect, sir. One day the, ch- the challenge beers. will be accepted after yes. after a nice day of fat hats and bottle speeching. We can drink the wine. Inevitable. That's going down. Well, Sounds good to me. Oh, so, right. so man, uh, do you prefer uh, Cody or do you prefer Hildebrand? Um, or do you prefer, I prefer Cody. Lord? You can call me Cody. That's fine. Cody. Cody. All right. Mm. All right. So, for Although you guys Lord listening, just did tangle a few things. But. Do you guys get this? <laughs> like, what's your magic name? They ask me that. What's your magic name? Mm. Uh, yeah, my, my, mine's Jason Ma. Yeah. It, yeah. It honestly depends where I am. If I'm in literally any setting that's not a Renaissance fair, is oh. just Cody. <laughs> yeah. When I work the Renaissance circuit, they call me Master Hildebrand. Nice. <laughs> Good dig that. Master Hildebrand. <laughs> You know that, that's what I call uh, that's what I call Wayne though. I call him Master Hildebrand. No, I call him Master Wayne. <laughs> you, know, you know the balloon guy from the city. You know the yeah, balloon yeah. guy, Josh. Yeah, I always call him Master Wayne. Master uh, you know Wayne. why? Because because of like Bruce Wayne, and I always think of like Alfred, where he's like oh, Master Wayne. That, that's why. Mm. So I, so yeah, yeah that makes he loves sense. It, that makes sense. He loves it. He lives for it, man. Yeah, you know, he's good. I, he's good. I came to New Orleans from Cincinnati, and I had a few people calling me the Cincinnati Kid, which is an old poker movie from the 50s. They say you can't pick your own nicknames. I was hoping that one would stick. I kind of liked it, the Cincinnati Kid, but it didn't stick. So I still don't have a name. I don't know. It's cool, though. I mean, Cincinnati Kid's pretty cool. I really like yeah, that. Yeah, but it didn't stick. It didn't stick, so it's not cool now. I don't know. It's ah. not cool. They used to call me the Sex God, but I, I told them, like, I probably shouldn't go with that. Not it seems like a lot it. of bus, a lot of the buskers have the names, though, right? They're, the guys have a, mm. just like a right. <laughs> guys have just. Do you know what? Do you want to know what my actual busking nickname was? Yeah, what is it? Because I used to, you know, I used to be quite fat. They used to call me Benny the Belly. <laughs> Benny the Belly. All right. Benny the Belly. Yeah, they were like, they were like, that'll be perfect. That'll be perfect for you because then you could have like a character. It doesn't have the same Benny ring the like Cellini has, you know. What's your name, Cellini? Uh, uh, Benny the Belly. What's uh, happening? Yeah, they call me. They call me Benjamin the Belly. Benjamin Jason, the Belly Button. Your name should just be Bellini. Yeah, give yourself that uh, downwards trumpet. Thing. That was pretty dope. I thought. Nah, that, was, that was the wrong one. So if you can't tell, Josh is the unfunny one of the group. So we've got Doug. Doug's quite funny and knowledgeable. You got me. I'm hilarious. And then, and then you got Josh, who's yeah, awesome. And uh, able to mute Jason at a moment. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> it's all like chaotic. With 
virtually zero preparation. This all seems to come together somehow every week, and we're making that happen again. But yeah, we haven't planned anything for this discussion, right? Like, there's no form well, I, think the, I, I, I think the organic nature of the talk is what it's all about, right? Can we yeah. start here? I would I like to that. know Cody's origin story. If we're going to talk to Cody, I would like because I don't Ooh. know, like, you're like, how did you get mm. started? Can we did start there? Okay. This, can someone yeah. in second this notion? Yeah, let's let's oh, start there. Sorry, let's yeah. <laughs> <laughs> sorry about that. Wrong symbol. <laughs> so, um, I got started. If you want to call yeah, it my start, I was you. about the same age everybody else when they get into magic was. I was about seven years old. Um, but I never got like a magic hit or anything like that. I actually got started because of a card trick that my grandfather showed me that him and all of his engineer buddies used to do. It was the, um, I'm sure you guys are familiar with the 21 cards, three pile trick. No, I've um, never seen that one. Could you show <laughs> us? Could you give us a quick demonstration? <laughs> um, <laughs> please don't. <laughs> yeah, please don't. Did he teach you um, that trick? Would, did, he, did he teach it to you? He showed, yeah, he, he taught me, he taught me how it worked but like he didn't teach me how it works because he was one of those self working card tricks so as long as you just follow the steps and yeah, put right. them in the patter yep. it, it does itself um and i did that for a little while and then i i got a little more involved um and i tried to do this one routine where i took a quarter vanished it under a silk um but in my case i just use like uh, a dish towel and um, the whole point was that the quarter would show back up inside of like an orange. And I am I allowed pretty to pretty elaborate on the show? first magic. I was eight. Am I allowed, am I allowed to run the show? No, I'm saying like that's elaborate as hell. Like <laughs> my yeah, first yeah. Right. wasn't that. No, well, you you said you didn't have a magic kit. Yeah. Is that coming from a book or just coming from your creativity no, or I, how, how does that happen? Came, that trick came from um, um, like a website. That had like detailed instructions on it. That makes sense. And I, I, I messed it up tremendously in front of my aunt. And when you're eight years old and you make like a fatal mistake like that, um, your natural impulse is to just quit and just stop. Hmm. So I stopped doing magic altogether. Fast forward eleven years, when I was nineteen, I went to go visit my uh, now wife. Uh, when she was in college and a friend of hers showed me another self-working trick i fell in love with it went home started learning more magic and a little bit more sleight of hand because i was older i could comprehend a lot of the instructions more and um it just kind of rippled into are you learning online then? Is it like your well, resources oh, 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 no. for uh, context how old are you now <clears throat> i am uh 27 now okay so so a good eight and, years now you've been like on the full swing of it Okay, nice. Yep. Mm -hmm. So, um, so learning the magic uh, in your second foray in the art was, uh, I guess, as most people do these days online, right? Like more YouTube probably. Yeah. And uh, yeah. Yep. I, I got started. I got started on YouTube following guys like um, Miss Mag, um, 822. Wow. Yeah. Um, yeah. Andy Andy Fields, yeah, watched, those are the, uh, that's the OG stuff, man. That's the stuff that I was watching. Me and Josh used to mm. have discussions about <laughs> Miss Mag's latest tutorial. Did you see oh, that yeah. one? <laughs> I have not seen his latest tutorial. What was it? No, no, no. no, 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 no. Back about, in the we're day. We're talking like eight years ago. Yeah, like eight years ago. Oh, yeah. Like, I, don't, I don't even yeah. know if that guy's still alive now. You know who's back? Because I shared that 52 cards is back in business. He's a guy to keep your eye on if you want to mm. look at someone from the he, past. He teaches some good stuff, man. He teaches some yep. stuff by Paul Harris. and I, He just teaches good stuff. Right. Quality good I stuff. Actually found, I found Assad. Assad. Who, um, isn't that his name? Assad, Assad yeah. 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 Yeah, Assad. I found Assad through uh, Jarek120, Disturbed Reality. On YouTube as Holy well. Holy crap. <laughs> mm. yeah. 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 Talk about those throwbacks. But then those guys started um, showing off where you can find other resources and books and stuff like that. So I decided to start branching away from YouTube and learning the cooler stuff that you find in like the books. Mm. But because I'm more of like a visual learner, I learn better from uh, watching videos and not from like reading per se. I would find the video adaptations of the books that I wanted to read. I and think um, I think that books have it. all the best gems. Books have all oh, the I agree, stuff. 100%. No doubt. One hundred percent. Where do you live, Cody? I live in Connecticut. 
Come and have a well, Yeah, no, no. More specific, buddy. What's your address? It's waiting for this. <laughs> I'm, I'm, mainly, I'm mainly curious if there's a magic shop near you. That's why I ask. That's my... Unfortunately, no. There oh. is one magic shop in Connecticut that I know of, but it's in some guy's house now. Sweet. Jesus. From, what I, Good from what I understand, it was. Um, it's also appointment only. Yeah. In order to get... <laughs> that, look, that's Wait, becoming let, more let, standard. Let me ask, mm-hmm. is, is his last name possible? <laughs> you know, it just might be. It's not Hank Lee, it is it? Might be. It's, not, it's, not, it's not Bob. First name Bob, last name possible. Yeah. Did Hank, Holy did, crap. did Hank Lee That's have a shop in Connecticut? Do you know who Hank Lee is? Anyone know who uh, Hank no, Lee is? All right. No. I am not. No, no, I don't, I don't know who Hank Lee is. Well, let me tell you real quick. He's a nefarious magic dealer from the Northeast who swindled his customers out of hundreds of thousands of dollars via credit card charges. Smart. Oh, jeez. Oh, damn. What? Nothing like a little credit for it. If you know who he was, that'd be funny if he was operating out of his house, but he's probably still locked up, actually. He went to Mm. uh, federal jail for that, I think. Uh, What an idiot getting caught. What an idiot. (laughs) (laughs) Just just to this day has not been Horrible (laughs) magician. Yeah. Yeah, the guy was, That's, I mean, it's like, like, he, like he was a major magic dealer, like one of the top four or five in the country at the time. So when it happened, it was a big deal. Oh, Hank wow. Lee was wow. a major magic dealer pre-internet, you know, back in the '90s kind of thing. You, yeah. you would get the Hank Lee flyer every month, and you'd have to read the pages and see what's new because Hank would send the mail, you know, before the imagine, internet. Imagine that. Yeah, I know. Bloody pa- a imagine the imagine having to rely on that. Like you didn't even have the video <laughs> demo. You just had this overblown prose. Like this thing is perfect, examinable, and everything. You, you open and, and you order it, and it's a standard piece of shit that most crap is when you order it. But then you Dude, just how, how to, good is how good is buying magic props that you can't like inspect first? It's so good. Imagine buying it from just <laughs> a little cartoon picture. Like, oh, I think I'll pick that one this week. It's horrible. Uh, man, Sam's minds would have made all the money back oh, then oh, if oh. they had pamphlets. <laughs> you know, it, it was guys like Hank who became the feeding frenzy that exists today. You know, there's a certain amount of magic dealers that mm-hmm. foster this inbreeding of magicians needing to. Consume, mm. consume, consume, consume. Well, they, you know, it's like I said, like after Shin Lim went on the show, they made this new like uh, culture almost of gimmicked card magic, you know, like all the flaps mm. and all those, all that shit. Mm. Yeah. Man, I am so, if I see one more person move some damn holes around a card, I'm going to scream. <laughs> I'm so yeah. sick of it. If I see a damn watch, if I see a card turn into a watch one more time, I'm gonna fucking spit blood. That <laughs> <laughs> that trick is so dead to me now. I swear to God. Was so it after I that saw... guy revealed it for you? I, well, I mean, it was that, but like at the same time, that trick brought like it was supposed to be just like a fun thing to share every once in a while. But then it became the one kind of video that TikTok just pushed out for me. So the so anytime anybody saw my videos. Apparently, it was always the watch video uh, to, like, some degree. And then it just brought nothing but trouble after that. So it's like there's really no point in doing it anymore. You, although you said that, but I noticed you did post it, like, four days ago, right? Like, the watch trick. Yeah, I did it as, like, an ironic thing. I used that Bo Burnham sound where he was like, Daddy made you your favorite content to open wide. Right, right. Uh, that's why he had the yeah. skull in there as well. Okay. And and um, yeah. that's stuff we want to dive into as well. But also I just noticed, and it's worth yeah. mentioning now, you have a, a baby on the way, correct? Like due I really do. soon. She, uh, next Wednesday. Yeah. Whoa. Damn, man. Yeah. Whoa. So I'm surprised. Man. Like this be a dad. That should be illegal. Yeah. I'm surprised <laughs> you can even think about anything else right now. That's crazy. Oh, of course. I, before she's born, I want to make a video with my wife because everyone keeps asking me if I'm going to teach my kid how to do magic. And um, to quote a, uh, another magician friend of mine, Adam Barisi, he because he got asked the same question all the time too. He he told me, um, no, they're not going to learn magic because that's my fucking hobby. They can find their own. <laughs> and I just thought that's that was good. hilarious. But I want to do, while she's still inside of my wife's belly, I want to do that um, Michael Amar baby hand thing just to show like, what a, mm. like a baby doing a vanish looks like, something like that. Did you do that already? I think I've seen you do a video of that already, right? That's I, how you announced I did the pregnancy? That, as the, uh, that, was the, yeah, that was the pregnancy announcement. 
Yeah, yep. nice. I want to just try it again because now she's uh now she's bigger and the hand size makes way more sense. Mm. True. Yeah. Right. Like when mm -hmm. it, yeah, it's developed arms and legs now, so it makes sense. I guess. Yeah. yeah. It went from a yeah. pinto bean to an actual person. It's crazy. <laughs> I just bought one of those things. Now, now I need a yeah. pregnant. <laughs> now I need a pregnant woman. Hey, Aaron. <laughs> Don't worry, bro. I'll be in America soon. I'll be in America, soon. I'll be in America <laughs> soon. You can I'm use still, me. I'm still in the doghouse, apparently. That might be the funniest way to use that prop. I don't know why I haven't seen anyone do it that way before. What? It, mm. Like, cu like coming out anyone? of like coming out of her a belly, like whoop, and then you going back seen in. That? That's that's what uh, that's what um, what's his name? Justin again? Flom did it. Yeah, that's the one, Justin Flom. Yeah, he did it with his yeah. wife, oh, and then they, and then after that, they had a kid. Yeah. You have my complete. Oh, sorry, sorry. I haven't seen any good magicians use it yet. I don't know why I haven't seen anyone <laughs> do that yet. Sorry. No. Well, to, to be fair, Justin Flum did that when he when he was still a good magician, not before he sold yeah, it. Yeah, he out, did. So. Yeah, I forgot. Yeah, it's right, hard to keep right, track. Right hard to keep track. Yeah, it is. It's like it's like they're playing jump rope with that now, aren't they? <laughs> I'm you a know, good magician. I'm a bad magician. I'm a good magician. No. I saw um Julius I, Dean had a lot uh, uh Instagram live yesterday and um. Uh, Blake Voigt is now working with him. Is on his team. I seen he oh, got flown no. into. Yeah, no, not, I don't know. Like, yeah, you know, I don't, I don't hate Julius Dean. I don't know why everyone hates Julius Dean. I don't hate that guy. I think he's good. He's not arrogant about it. You know, he's uh, he, he knows what he's doing, and he, he's well, he's honest it's, about it. It's it's not that. I think it's it's the whole uh, Rick Lax band bandwagon of those type of videos they're making, and you know what I'm. We've talked is, about is this Julius before. Julius Dean right? an exposer? I've seen him. I know he uses fake audience reactions. No, but, he, uh, no I just, he yeah. just does fake audience reactions. Okay. I don't think I've ever seen him do a video that was like... Uh, no, he doesn't. Yeah, he doesn't like reveal that stuff. Yeah. magic. He just... Right. I mean, to be fair, isn't like the fake audience reaction set up like almost exposing the trick in itself? No. Well, let me let me give you this. Let me give you this, Hildebrand. Okay. Boy, sure. You make con you make content online, right? And so your target audience is the people watching that video. There's no difference right. between what he's doing and what you're doing because he's doing it, and that that the people that are fake reacting or whatever, they're only there to heighten the experience of the person watching the video. So similarly to like a magician using like you know women to cut in half and all that sort of stuff. I mean that's yeah essentially the same or stage hands all that sort of stuff. What is the so, difference so between that tool, and someone then, doing huh? fake reaction? Yeah, it's a well, tool. It's a well, the, entertainment the point. The fine okay. line, the fine line, though, is that the audience must believe that it's a real. There audience. you go. There's the bullseye. Uh, yeah, okay. you can, it, um, yeah. Okay. I mean, if you can tell, if you can find me someone who genuinely believes that the people reacting to that video aren't in on it, I'd be very okay, impressed. Let's, <laughs> let me let, let me say the bullseye is this during the viewing of the video. So kind of like when you're watching a movie and the plane blows up, you want to go, oh, you know. So believe it for the moment. Yeah. Maybe mm -hmm. afterwards you go, okay, those people were faking it. But yeah, what, when exactly. you're watching it, you don't want to watch it and go, okay, that guy's faking it. You know, and sometimes you can tell mm. when they are. Yeah, but I think yeah. like you know, I, I think Julius Dean is just an entertainer, man. He makes online yeah. content and people right. like it. And uh, yeah. I don't know why there's any reason why that should be negative. See, a negative is when they're like, oh, here's a uh, like Rick Lax, for example, like flat out revealing a magic trick, just just okay. being like, oh yeah, at, I can, at number three, I, yeah. I can sum it up. It's because, so in the beginning, he was one of the first guys to go viral on, you know, online, right? Like, but by doing magic that wasn't executed that well. And then he, but he had the bright idea to have the audience on his side. So the camera was seeing their reaction and the, you know, the gimmick or the, the performance, the trick at the same time. So that, he was really brilliant to figure that out. But the, the thing that I had that's a bit funny is that <clears throat> he now is teaching magic. He's got this thing like his, uh, his Facebook messenger bot will send you a message going, hey, join the Julius Dean Magic Club. And then you see the trailer and it's like, look, you can, you can, you can take a coin and then load it. And then he does like the load on the head. He's just teaching like magic not well. So I think to a mass, mass audience. Yeah. So that's one weird thing okay. that I have. But obviously, he's going to make a ton of money with that. But that's one weird thing. And then the other thing that eventually brought me to mentioning Blake Voigt was because, uh, you know, Rick Lax is making these videos now that are three minutes long. He makes a ton of money from them, but they're 
they're always uh, super lame. Garbage. And now, and now he's got people like mm. Julius Dean doing it and Xavier Mortimer doing it, and they all don't care that mm. people are now perceiving them as like the money know. must be very good. Yeah, it is yeah. very good. Yeah, we already established you know, that Julius Dean makes like ten million a month. It's what? Yeah, to what? you know, it's something you know ridiculous. That? Ten Did million you know a that? month. It's just, yeah, it's he makes stupid. he makes a lot so of money, man. It's, it's 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 so so. There was a DJ who also works for him, which, funnily enough, both Josh and I know, like to some extent. Fortify. He was the one that did the Magic yeah. City, and now he works for Julius Dean. And um, he was talking to what? Scott Ferris. You remember, you know Scott Ferris, the guy that owned Magic City. Yeah, yeah. yeah and he was, it, and then <clears throat> and then Scott told me that uh, yeah, that, that's how much he makes. And I was like. What? I was like, okay. Well, I mean, if you're making that much money, like, who cares what? Who cares what the sheep think, man? <laughs> yeah, you're right. You're right. You know, he's got yeah. he's got enough money to buy you and sell you. I so wonder that. Like, like, I think you, yeah, I, I, I just <laughs> does it become? I guess it just overcomes you because I can't imagine having wanting money that badly to where I just start producing mindless crap that they do. I no, mean, I, where's the I agree, satisfaction but, in that? You know, you know, there's one thing though. There's one thing because uh, Chris Ramsey and Julius Dean are, um, are friends. Yeah. And one of the things that Julius Dean has said many times is that he doesn't see himself as like a magician more than an entertainer. He sees himself as an entertainer first and then okay, magic yeah. is like, yeah, you know, I- just a part of that, part of that formula, right? Now, when it comes to teaching yeah. magic, it, it's also the question of where do we draw the line at who has the right to teach it and who doesn't. Yep. Um, mm. Obviously, you can't teach stuff that's not yours, obviously. Like, I couldn't right. go out there teaching right. teaching the clip shift right now. But do you even know who created the clip shift, Josh? Only through uh, us talking about it, but I couldn't name him right now. Yeah, it's so weird. He, it was like a one and done. Chad Nelson mm-hmm. was his name. That's that's it. That's the one. <laughs> I remember the I remember the trailer because he came out on the little tricycle. Yeah, that that, that was a really yeah. A, uh, yeah. That that yeah. was a revolutionary. Uh, was it a DVD originally, or was it a download? Yeah, it was a it was a, it was a DVD. Re- well, resur- back then, resurfaced. downloads were pretty rare. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right, let's dive into anyway. some some world of TikTok. <clears throat> Hildebrand or Cody, how do you? <clears throat> Because we have questions, but I guess to start off yeah. with, like, how, how do you approach your Just remember, content though, for in order TikTok? to think, in order to think, we must risk being offensive. So, <laughs> okay. So with, so with sure. that, so with that in mind, let's uh, let's play some devil's advocate and so, see what happens. Because all, but, all these questions ooh, we have, yes, all these me. questions, all these questions we have, we're curious, but also we know on the back of what you've decided to do has obviously built you a massive following. So it's not like anything you've done is wrong. It's just that we're very curious. So I guess the first okay. question is like, how do you approach- Why do you repost the same thing many times? Okay, we'll start there. That's the first question. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I, so I, when I first got on TikTok, I thought to myself that this could finally be like the social media format that I could use to get some kind of a following. Because mm-hmm. usually when I went on to social media, be it like having Facebook pages were actually a viable social media source. And then Instagram, I would post like maybe once a week at best. And I can, maybe... Can you put that in the timeline? <laughs> like when did you start doing that? Was it like yeah. pre-pandemic? So I set up, oh, for sure. So I set up my Facebook page um, back in like... 2014 maybe a year into doing magic uh-huh. and then i set up my instagram about three years later so around 2017 um and i i maybe gathered about 450 followers on both of those those pages but that was over the course of like several years yep <clears throat> so mm-hmm. when Sim- so, I, had, so I had a very TikTok. similar experience, Instagram, Facebook is not right. dissimilar. You and I from that experience mm. pre pre it's little, it's, pre pandemic. Yeah, but okay. So we got right. that. Fast forward to TikTok so, and and it's so pandemic in your home. I actually didn't want to download TikTok. If I'm being totally honest, I yeah. I just thought that it was, I thought it was like a Gen Z kind of thing, and Same. that I was my daughter talked me into it to jump on. I actually downloaded it because my wife wouldn't stop sending me videos on okay. TikTok. Right. 
and eventually like the opening up the link to safari on my iphone and then you know hitting play waiting for it to buffer and then play over and over and over again it got really old so i was like all right fuck it i'll just download the app so i did and i was like all right maybe i'll post a couple of videos or something <clears> like that and see what happens so i did and then it it was interesting because i got like 10 to 20 likes really really quick which was weird for me because usually that came within like a week normally yep Yep. so i was like all right what are some tips and tricks that i can do to better my growth to maybe make this actually interesting um and i went on to youtube and i was like all right so how how do i how do i get big how do i get famous on tiktok Yep. And I ended up finding this dude uh, on YouTube who um, who literally just teaches you the formula and, like, the in and out. The guy with the thick eyebrows, right? Giving away too much. Um, yeah. Robert Benjamin. Is yeah. His name. Ah, old guy. thick brows Benjamin. Nice. Yeah. Well, and he, <laughs> he, he gives away information without giving away information. He would make him an amazing magician in that in that regard. But he are, are we leading into his suggesting you, so. that you post repost yes. your clip? Is that where yes. we're going with that's, this? Yes, I, I don't want to jump really over, but I'm, I'm thinking. <laughs> no, 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 no. I, I, I really extend stories. A lot of side quests and those things. I'm sorry. So yeah, he he recommended. Yeah, you better be sorry. Repost. <laughs> Thank you. I can have another. Um, he recommends that you post uh, the same kind of video more than once. And you repost old successful videos more than once. And I just took that advice and I was like, all right, fine. I'll, I'll roll with it. I'll see what happens. And a couple of reposts have actually done better than the originals. Interesting. In some cases. Interesting. But at the same time, too, it also feels to me like I'm beating a dead horse. Because like <laughs> I, do, I do the trick. Like, honest to God, I don't like repeating the stuff that I do. I don't. Interesting. Like, I so, okay, so, so <clears throat> on that note, on that I, note, then, if you really don't like repeating the stuff that you do, I mean, you know, cloud is all well and good, but wouldn't you prefer to post stuff that you do enjoy doing? Like, uh, oh, of course I do. Of course. So, yeah, like, I like do. for me, like, I find myself like, <laughs> I don't know, almost cringing when I'm like making a video and I'm like, man, I don't, don't want to do the linking rings again. I think I've uploaded the ring, linking rings like five or six times. And, and like, I, and my inclination when I and I've reposted, so I, I'm guilty not a lot of reposts, but now my inclination if I'm going to do the same trick, I'm going to reshoot it and add something to it. Mm, um, yeah, yeah, like a different routine yeah, or like yeah. a little something, something. Yeah. yeah. Let me interject here also. If I'm not mistaken, you're making a con uh, concentrated effort to be to put more variety into not reposts. I think yes. certainly over the last <laughs> month, I've seen a change in your. Yeah, uh, you know, because I, I, you know, you're on my radar, man. You, you pop up all day long on my feed. I see you all the time, so I see what you're doing. And, uh, and there was I a think, lot. I think what really helped. Yeah, I'm sorry. What no, it's saying? okay. No, my, I'm just repeating. You were I, saying I think what really helped me get out of that slump was the fact that I was able to get back to doing performances in front of people. Again. Yeah, sure. Um, yeah, that does because help. that allowed me. Because that allowed me to break out a lot of the stuff that doesn't really do well on its own like if you're just performing it for just a camera it really helps to do a lot of tricks like you can do crazy man handcuffs just like to a camera but that's not going to have the same effect as when you do it for a person that's holding on to the other rubber band you know what i'm saying so i mean i think some of doug's best videos are his uh little snippets from street performing right they're probably oh, the ones i oh, enjoy I the most love... and then mm. of late yeah i found I like I, I'll, I'll be honest with you because I remember running into you like months ago when you would when you had yep. like I think you had like forty k or something fifty k, and something um, like that, yeah, yeah. And I remember I was following you, and then I think I saw you repost like the same thing like too many times, so I stopped following you, right? And then just That's recently, reasonable. yeah, just recently I saw you posting some performance videos, and I found myself for the first time in ages actually watching you again because I'm like, oh, okay, nice. Because there's actually like some stuff happening, you know, you're doing something different and yeah. you're engaging with an audience. Yeah. And, 
which is a uh, you know it's a totally different form of content, which is great to see. Obviously, I mean, I'm 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 a sucker for content. I love content. Content, but oh, yeah, <clears throat> content. Love it. I, I'm looking forward to you getting to Sydney, sir, and getting to work. I'm oh, sure, man, dude. That's I, when I'm the job banging for it, man. I leave. I know tomorrow. you are, brother. I leave. I leave tomorrow. This house is empty. I mean, look at this. Look at this shit, man. It's like a fucking. You leave tomorrow. <laughs> it's just oh, empty, God. bro. Wow, nice. Yeah, it's nice. just look like empty. <laughs> yeah, because I've had to like clean this motherfucker up. Yeah, I leave tomorrow. So I leave tomorrow <laughs> at one o'clock. But and then yeah, I've got I've got it all planned out. Like I fully intend to be doing daily content. I've done it before, <clears> and I'll be doing it again. And uh, it's gonna be good. But can we anyway, it's not about being content in Sydney. Yeah, I'm gonna be doing like a vlog series about it all. So my my ideal scenario is that I might encourage a lot of magicians to think of busking as a potential path to success, yeah. as it were. Oh, I think sure. that busking. Sure. Busking is underrated, man. It really is. And if you're good at it, mm -hmm. it's a proper living, man. I mean, look at Gazzo. Yeah, that man owns properties. <laughs> the most Many important properties. thing is it gives you an audience as much as you want. If you have a good pitch where you can you know, yeah. do 10 or 20 shows a day, that's the experience <laughs> that you get. I mean, you, can, you might get it in a restaurant doing tables, but it's just not the same as having an audience you know, in front of you. Right. Not only that, the streets are honest. The streets are unbelievably Absolutely honest. Like if, you, if, you're, if you're at a oh, venue, 100%. they are expecting you to be there, right? So there's like yep. this, there's kind of like this perceived niceness that needs to happen regardless of whether you're good or bad. And then, uh, but on the streets, man, if they don't like you, they'll walk away, man. They, they, oh, people just won't have time for you. Yeah. So yep. that's the, had, yeah, that'll cultivate oh, yeah. your skills. But mm. anyway, <clears throat> yep. but anyway, yeah, as I was saying, it's good to see you doing like more performance orientated stuff like definitely yeah, definitely your tiktok is definitely very different from where it was mm -hmm. and then the it's other question lot, is like what do you yeah. what do you see mm -hmm. yourself what? with it all like what's your ultimate goal with social media are you just kind of just building an audience for the hell of it or i mean i i just like performing magic i just like sharing magic with people honestly way to go. The, like i was honestly hoping to maybe get a thousand followers and just call it a day um, mm -hmm. I ended up getting the following that I have, honest to God, like, hand to God, like, by, by pure luck. Yeah, that and, Linking Rings video um, helped you out immensely. It really did. It really did. You know, and, I still think that that's um, one of your best videos until I saw it for the seventh I agree. time. <laughs> <laughs> you know? You know? That's reasonable. Even I'm sick of that video at this point. But it's it's one of those things where it's like, um, now that I've got it, like I have to, it's like, it's all like, it's the worst analogy possible. And I am, I am very sorry that it's the only one that I can think of, but it's like a Tamagashi. You have to take care of it. You have to nurture it. Otherwise, like if you don't like, you're going to lose it. And I, 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 now that I have it, like, I just want to show and reciprocate my appreciation to everybody that has been following me by giving them a consistent flow of as much content as possible. I, so do you, do you think... I, oh, no, I have go, some go, constructive go. criticism that I offer to you. Yeah. You had a, a, a kind of a time where you were struggling a little bit. You posted about it. You made a post about a comment someone yep. had made, and you felt like you, you, the, you know, the, it, the haters, right? They hate. It happens online. Gotta you, love you, you, you were taking it bad, and my, my suggestion sure. was maybe to focus more on posting – Quality over quantity. Quality over one a day, quality. right? So, like, yeah. maybe you're not even one a day. Like, not to post, yeah, not even every day, but just the like best I, that you can do regularly. So, I don't uh, know if you've noticed on yeah. my channel, on my TikTok, but I actually, I'll post once a day sometimes, but often cases I post like only three times a week, maybe. I post, well, sometimes uh, not yeah, even I in post, a week. Yeah, I, like at the moment, <laughs> at the last time I posted was six days ago. Like I oh, um Jesus. and it, it's, okay. and there's still like a constant growth from it. Like I'm not, I'm not not. And growing, I, you know, I'm I think growing. I'm I'm proof that that's the case because I never. Mm. Sometimes I'll do two a day if I do a trend or answer a question. Yeah, but same I, here. Yeah. As a magician, I think one a day is enough. I think more than that, you might be softening your audience yeah. to your. Present. Have you ever? You know, it's like that old principle. Like leave them, leave them wanting more, right? Like if you're suddenly like all yeah. over the place there. And, and especially if you're reposting the same stuff, because I, I know for me that like there are some channels on TikTok where their whole thing, like, you know, that Khabib guy, how he's always like, like that thing, does this thing, like, you know what I'm talking about? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. I, 
I cannot yeah. stand that content. I don't know why that man is so damn popular because I, every time I watch his videos, I'm just like, I already know how it's going to end, right? I know that this person's put their shoe on weird. He's going to put his shoe on normal and then he's going to go like that. Right. And it's like, what the hell, man? <laughs> like, but you can't really do right. that with magic, you know? Like, like with magic, like if you do a trick, if you do a trick and then they see your video again and you're like, hey, I've got the rings again. They're like, okay, well, he's just going to do that again. So they'll skip it, right? And now what ends up yeah. happening is you hurt, you hurt your own watch time. Because TikTok, you know, TikTok pushes your content based on uh, watch percentage and stuff like that. So, if all of a sudden you post a video and it gets a lot of views, like say, like the like I did Doug Con's knife switching routine, switch blades, yep. and it was it sucked. And it, it was, was so bad. I told him it was good, but it really wasn't. <laughs> yeah, right. You loved it, man. I remember. I remember you were like, "Damn!" Because it only took me four hours to learn how to do it. <laughs> Oh man! And then I then I made it again with a with a better you know better handling, but it's it was hard to um, have old guy hands. That's what I'm saying. I'm blaming it on the yeah, old right. guy. Whatever, um, man. You're like you're like a spring chicken, man. I kind of see am. you running running around Vegas, you little party fiend animal. I still got it. Yeah, you can't stop, and no stopping <laughs> you. But you know, my my point is my point of all this is like mm. uh, you know if you post the same thing, that it becomes so predictable what you're going to do. Do you, don't you think that just sort of hurts your own, like, potential to show magic, if that makes sense? Yeah. Yeah. Now that I'm, like, learning and starting to really start to understand, like, the ins and outs of everything, it 100% does. Because, like, if you post <clears throat> multiple videos a day of multiple different tricks, eventually you're going to run yourself super dry. And you're going to find yourself trying to find the next best social media trick or the next best trick to learn. And like while learning is great, um, just constantly learning stuff just for the sake of putting out content is going to also simultaneously lower the quality of what you do. And I've already started to notice that with myself, and I don't like it like at all. Yeah, so, I mean, like I, I, I personally would rather do like a really simple like here and there, but with a really good presentation, lots of jokes, lots of, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Like let's like make a real engaging, yeah. real funny. Like recently, I think the last video I posted might've been the, the 3d coin is what I was calling it. The 3d coin where like I have okay. a coin and I put it into a 2d space so you can't see it and then I can produce it again. And I was wearing like 3d glasses and just trying to make it like a, an interesting story, I right. guess. <clears throat> Yeah, and, you know, th those are the videos that often perform well for me is the ones where there's a lot of patter and a lot of chit chat. And like, I'm just scrolling through my stuff now. Like I did Reformation. So a torn and restored card. What did you post then, today, Cody? Did you make posts? I'm sure you did. Huh? I did. Um, I did two posts, two, maybe three, but they were all they were all performances uh, from the weekend and uh, today. Um, nice. I did. I think you did oh, the invisible God, deck, right? The first one, like the most I recent did David one. David My most recent one was actually David Regal's All Alone that I did, which is like a modified invisible deck with um, a kicker at the end. That's right. Really nice. Yeah. Um, Come on, Josh, get your posted. shit together. <laughs> <laughs> well, the presentation on the market. For, how dare you? Well, the presentation was like very invisible decky. That's why it okay. made me think of that. Yeah, but you had the yeah. deck, you had the deck face down with their card ending face up, right? Yep. That's the ending. Yes. Yeah. Um, Have you seen the new yeah, invisible I deck? I mean, I call it the new invisible deck, but it's the one with the four aces, and then like on the back of the four aces, it says like, like the queen of hearts or whatever, or like it'll be like the king of oh, diamonds. Like it spells it. Have you seen that? Yeah, it's called, no, isn't it called, uh, it's called, it's called Any Card, I think, by Richard Sanders. Yep. I think so, yeah. It's good, though. It's a good trick. I watched, I watched that and I was like, she. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That and SpongeBob is uh, any good to go, Jace. I put the invisible right, deck. That's a worker's in repertoire. <laughs> the invisible deck's yeah. a better trick by far. Mm. Yeah, mm -hmm. Doug's been doing the invisible deck for uh, 104 years now, so. Uh, so we had, yes. um, we did have a comment. We had a question from one of our Patreon members for Cody, which was, and I'm just as it says, uh, what's your thinking behind starting beef with your viewers? Ooh. Fun. <laughs> okay. That's a good question. Yeah, that's so, That is a good it's question. A, yeah, yeah, I have noticed question. that you. <laughs> yeah. So I, uh, I'm not intentionally trying to start beef. I know that's exactly how it comes off. 
However, you that's never the son of a bitch. <laughs> I know. Um, I might as well. No, I don't think so. I don't think it comes off that way. Point. But I, I, I find um, the question. You, you, you know, I, the vibe that I get from it is that you seem to take uh, this. I mean, this. I've always said that you can't tell people how to enjoy magic, right? right? And what I mean by that is that, like, if someone wants to try and figure out how the trick is done, you are better served not saying anything to them because by saying anything you either confirm it or you don't confirm it and if you don't confirm it what ends up happening is that it, now you're providing like let's say let's say someone says like oh the linking rings it's magnetic and then you say nah no magnets right now they go okay now you've eliminated one of the possibilities so now it's not magnets maybe there's a gap you know what i mean and that's kind of how yeah. it goes right so like rather than talking to them why not just don't worry about it. Just let him guess, all, man. First of Just all, let him wait, guess. Wait, I, but it, Cody didn't answer the question yet. Mm. I'm wondering what the purpose so, is, right? So, yeah, like, yeah. maybe your purpose is to generate more content, create controversy, which is a good tactic. But it, please answer the question. Good. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> so part of it is, yes, it's it's an easy way to make another video. Okay. However, um, from a magic standpoint, it also kind of allows me to – the way. I saw it was it was a way for me to deepen the illusion as a whole by visually eliminating that one possibility okay. that they may or may not have suggested. Um, when it when it gets to the point that like people start to really get like aggravated, I have and I'm sure you guys have noticed. This. I don't know if Josh has noticed it or not because you and I actually haven't really spoken all that much. But uh, Josh um, notices everything. Notice. Great. Okay, so <laughs> if if you've noticed this, then it's it's not a big secret. I I am a very impulsive responder. I don't. This is something that is very very new to me. Having a following that is this big um, is something I've never experienced before. Because, like I said, my biggest follower count was maybe 400, 450 people on Instagram, and well, even I then, the engagement was such piss poor, whatever. Having all of this now on TikTok, we're all in that same boat, so brother. Weird. You're not alone. Yeah, think, Everyone yeah, yeah, here is I, like that. And and take so I was not anything, even on social media until anything the that we say that maybe you know we're saying is right, or uh, who knows? Who fucking right. knows? Sure, <laughs> yeah. nobody knows right now. So, <laughs> so I'm, oh, I know, I know everything. Jason knows. Well, well Josh interest. really oh, knows. I'm sure. <laughs> Josh is the one who knows, but he doesn't well, talk, so he doesn't. But talk I have the it. I, I, I have the smallest, so, puniest TikTok following of all of us, so I can't really say anything. What do you got now? Eight and a half k. That's massive, bro. That's still oh, an yeah. amazing following, man. Think the best way that it was put to me was by um, actually Markiplier of all people. You take take the amount of people that follow you, right, and you put that amount of people <clears throat> in like a football stadium. Like that amount of people that are filling all of those seats, mm. that's a lot mm. of people to put into one place. Is that yeah. is that what you say to everyone with a small account? <laughs> no, no, actually, no. appreciate I, it. I, I, well, you true. sound like no, Josh's ex girlfriend. <laughs> it's not about small. the size; it's how you use it, Josh. <laughs> right. When he said you know, it's amazing, uh, it is amazing. It's true. Eight thousand is amazing. That is not something that you scoff at. A lot of guys. Oh are, look, I got. I got to look, say, look, in, in the I'm time very, that we've been talking, though, it is super nice to uh, to actually speak with Cody because I think you're a really nice guy. Uh, you seem like a really pleasant guy. Um, you, you seem just like a magic guy. Like how we're chatting, you fit right in, which is which is I, yeah. which is really nice. You know, super, super chill and. Bold, so, like everyone else, hmm. except for me, obviously. So I'm actually wearing a wig, so check this out. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! You know, and here I thought you had enough hair naturally for the three of us. So yeah, yeah, I got a little bit. Of, I got a little bit of hair. So before TikTok, I was I was a worker. <clears throat> like I was I was just a full time, well not full time. I was a part time worker, like magician. But now, mean? yeah, I was a part time yeah. magician doing like just full on shows. I never had any intent to become a social media magician. Um, yeah, I was I was the same. I, I never. Now that I'm now that I'm here, like, I've failed at this many <laughs> times, so I'm happy to have some success now. I beat my head against oh, this wall for about twenty years. Yeah, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, I'm sure mm -hmm. all of us can relate to that. <clears throat> no, I can't relate to that. I wasn't even on social media at all. Like, not at all. It took Josh months to convince me to get on social media. But it took and me years. Convincing. <laughs> yeah. 
Because yeah, so that, really, you, 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 are, you owe me. You guys on a subreddit, too. So. <laughs> <laughs> you have yeah. one on the subreddit? What was uh, that? <clears throat> because of Josh's convincing, now Jason's one of Chris Ramsey's favorite guys on his subreddit. Oh, yeah, right. <laughs> I'm all over there that, man. Go. I've been I've been on the front page of Reddit so many times I don't even care to count I anymore. No, dude, it's <clears> crazy. <throat> um, but to, to put that in, to put that question into like a very like condensed answer, just so they have a record of it, it's it's for content, and it's also just because I'm a very impulsive person who needs to better learn to just ignore shit like that. That's that's really all it is. I think I think I. Like, I, think if I, think just, I I first realized it I when uh, you, you reposted a comment. <laughs> I first noticed I it when something? you let, let me let me just mute Jason. No. Uh, see, we think alike. Yeah, um, I think I first realized that when you reposted your card to watch trick, and the comment was yep. like st- "stop doing it," and your reply was "I'll do whatever I want," and you did it again. <laughs> Right. And uh, that's what I was yeah. like. He, th- this guy does what this guy wants, you know. <laughs> here's the other. Here's it's another question for you. Like, here's, here's yeah. another question. You're right. Yeah, yeah, it is your page. I agree. But mm. <laughs> I mean, I can't disagree. Can I? But um, <laughs> you. Um, so let me ask you though. In reposting yeah. that watch trick as many times as you have, do you feel like you yeah. may have challenged people to expose you? Because yeah. I feel like that when you posted it, because you always seem to post it and then you always seem to do a thing where you're like, <clears throat> they're like, oh, it's in your hand. And you're like, there's nothing in this hand. You know, like, and you, you'd like try and prove them wrong so much that eventually yeah. one dude went on AliExpress, bought a shit version of it, and then fully tried to expose yeah. you, right? And like, yeah. do you think that, do you that, think that the fault is partly with you that maybe you shouldn't have oh, been 100%. challenging your own? Oh, 100 okay. I'll own that shit. Come on, I'll own that. I, I put okay, myself, good. because I didn't know how to properly handle, because I still don't know how to properly handle this shit, I put myself into a position that allowed for that kind of a person to make me look like a piece of shit. Um, like I mean, a I, lot of magicians came I, to your defense as well, but... Um, <clears throat> and I saw... I saw I saw your comment. I saw Doug's <clears throat> comment too. And um, to did you see you, Doug's also? You did you see Doug also follow up with? Uh, I would never own that piece of shit. <laughs> <laughs> I did. I did, and I thought that was hilarious. Uh, I thought that was funny uh, as hell. I, I, I thought I, that the was fir- great. I saw, the fir- I, the yeah. first time I saw that trick, I saw Shin Lim do it. He had it before anyone else had yep. it, and, mm. and I saw that and I was like, "That's a piece of shit." Why is he doing it? <laughs> <laughs> I so think I first, first time, saw, the first time I saw it, I, I saw Eric Jones for a yeah, long time. Same. Yeah, mm. did, well, funny too is I just I just saw yesterday on Instagram um, Rex, Rex, the creator of Watch This, yeah, um, yeah. posted posted my video on his story on Instagram, and then he followed me saying thanks for putting my <laughs> video on Age. Or uh, thanks for putting uh, my. <laughs> He's a millionaire page. now, thanks to and you. <laughs> yeah, I'm like Jesus Christ. Yeah, advertising. Um, you know, it was. <clears throat> you know how you buy. You know how you buy those magic kits, and slowly over the years, like better and better magic is making its way into it. <laughs> it's gonna, gonna be. It's gonna be in the children's magic kit. <laughs> it's right. Yeah. It's, it's like what, the pen through I, anything you know in the kits now. It's like that. Yeah. I just saw on Amazon um, for for Prime Day one of the things that came up in my suggested was the the chris angel entertainers magic kit and inside that kit which was so surprising to me was um the mental epic board the mental mental which... epic the uh the prediction board you have your predictions that you write on top you close the panel so they can't see it and then you write down their answer on the bottom so then when oh, you go, wow. get to the finale and you lift up the panels everything matches wow yeah that I've I've seen that as like several mentalists closers, and I thought it was one of the most powerful pieces of like <laughs> mentalism I've ever puts, seen. He puts like invisible and, thread in there and expects people to be able to use it, but he's really just giving the secret away. No one's going to do it know, at all. That's what really you know. That, Josh, yeah, and I, that, yeah. Josh and I went to a magic shop, uh, not a magic shop, a shitty toy shop, sorry, and we bought a magic kit, and in, <laughs> in it, in it, we had like 
like multiplying billiard balls and all this shit. And I was yeah. like, what the what? hell? Yeah, the like thing, I, was, thing, I ended up doing multiplying billiard ball and like fooled a group of like. I was gonna ask, was that, that the one? You, yeah. Was that your first yeah. multiplying ball you put on TikTok? Is that the one? The, you the red one, the, the yeah. little red one. I think it was <laughs> yeah. dollar yeah. store magic kit. And yeah, it yeah, even yeah. had for a beginner, it even had a pull in it for a, a vanishing <laughs> cigarette. It had a little like what? you know three D printed little, little suction thing yeah. with like a. a yeah, with like a rubber band kind of thing. So you could like vanish yeah. it and it had a paper clip and I was like uh, a safety pin. I'm like, why is this? That, that oh, it had the bending spoon. spoon. You know, the, the metal <laughs> bending spoon. It had that yeah, too. Yeah, like, what the yeah. Hell? Jesus. Yeah. And, uh, this, this was like a $50 kit. Like, <laughs> and when I went to... Me. When I last went to Vegas, they <laughs> were in the shopping centers selling the floating card, and they were selling bloody extreme burn with the four ones turning into hundreds. Wow. In a, in a shopping Whoa. in a shopping center. Holy can you believe shit. that? What? Yeah, that, that, yeah, everything, yeah. everything's, everything's oh, like I can that, believe yeah. that. I used That's to work for Magic crazy. Masters where my job was to do much that. But that. In fact, one of their best-selling products was Perry Maynard's version of Steve Fearson's hookup. Yeah, 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 right, right. But it's... Uh, am, I, am I frozen or are you guys frozen? Uh, yeah, okay. no, that was Doug. Thank yeah, God. Doug has I'm a stroke back. every so, five minutes. It happens, but it's been doing pretty well. <laughs> anyway, yeah, I, had to I I would not demo the invisible thread trick, and they hated mm. me for that. The the bosses were like, "You got to sell more light flights," and I'm like, "I'm not doing it, man." You know, I sell plenty of magic right. here. I don't have to sell that trick to these people that aren't going to do it. They're going to pay fifty dollars, get a piece of string, and then hate magic for the rest of their life. They're going to open it up, break the thread, going, "Where's the yeah. the trick laying yeah. in here?" And then be like, "Oh." <laughs> I I used to do magic as like product demos for non magic related stores that I used to work for. Hmm. So like I used to work at um I used to work at a tea shop called Tivana. I don't know if you guys are familiar with it or not. It's like a it's a loose leaf organic kind of a tea shop. And one of their big things that they really wanted us to push was this stuff called blue teas. <clears throat> They would take tea and uh, they would wrap it around a flower. So when it was done steeping in the water, the tea would like open up and the flower would come out. So it would look really pretty. But in a dried up state, before it went into the water, it was just a ball. So I would use those balls. I would literally use the balls of tea to do cups and balls routine to like attract customers. And they would see that. And then I would be like, yeah. And then at the end, the final load would be like a bloomed like flower that comes out of the tea. I'm like, this is what you get. Wow. Nice. Wow. Yeah, okay. It, it worked. <clears throat> that was the crazy part. It actually like worked. And have you used that for a TikTok Ooh. yet or not yet? No, because Tivana closed uh, about five years ago. <laughs> they started to them and ran their business model into the ground. Must have done it wrong. <laughs> oh, yeah. It's your fault, oh, dude. So your it's probably be closed them down. I, know. I, know. <laughs> I would. I so, wouldn't know how the trick works. So I decided, when, you know what? This whole chain's dead. I, yeah, well, I, I've when, worked a few product promotions in my life. Pretty much every one of them has been dismal. Like, man, let me tell you yeah, about Josh, doing. Josh and I had a little magic stand at one stage. Let me tell you about this one. Blackstone unlock the magic Oreo. I had to stand no. at a grocery store next to a stuffed Oreo cookie doing Blackstone <laughs> magic tricks for who's in the shop. Who's in a grocery oh, store? Oh, no. Do the math on who's in a grocery store. It's mothers and right. the children they can't leave at home. None of them care about me and the magic store with the big Oreo cookie next. Oh, I care God. about you and the big Oreo cookie. That was, that wow. was uh, I kind of care a little bit more about the Oreo cookie at this point. Yeah. Hey, that, uh, that was a summer of paying bills, as I call it. Yeah. So, Cody, Cody, when Jason yep. and I start, when we started filming a lot more vlogs and stuff because of the pandemic, we both upgraded our camera kit and stuff to using what I'm using now, which is like a, a Canon M50. And then we got Doug yep. onto the Canon train as well. Um, do you have any plans to upgrade your sort of filming equipment or like sound yeah. or anything like that? Oh, 100%. 100 hey, You just got an iPhone, right? Um, I remember you just got one. Do you um, use the, it? The iPhone 4,312. Right? Yeah, I'm talking to you, Cody. You have an iPhone you're I'm using? using? So, yeah, I'm using the iPhone 12 Pro Max because uh, TikTok took up the majority of my memory space on yep. my last phone. Yep. So I wanted mm. to get the phone that I just like iPhones. I don't Smart. know what it is. It's simple. They're simple. You need, you need to look so into shooting those like the most storage. 
you need to look uh, into using that, tele- is good too. that telephoto mm-hmm. lens is on that phone and you should be using yes. that when you're shooting yes. those it'll make your what so, your, your shot wider that's what i use in the so i'm doing that i'm starting to do that now but what i'm also doing is i found out you can change the resolution on your phone's camera yeah, to this- um you can change it to 30 frames per second oh. to 60 even 4k Damn. when you're filming <clears throat> Here's a big tip on the iPhone that changed my changed my output. There's an app called Filmic. Yeah. Filmic Pro is the name of the app. <clears throat> and it gives you access okay. to functions of functions of being awesome. I, the native iPhone uh, system does. It costs about 20 okay. bucks and it allows you to shoot in raw format which will allow you to edit the footage in a stronger way. So if you want to oh, upgrade... Well, this means you can color grade it. You can color grade it. Mm. Yep. So, oh, that's so, cool. Yeah. Can, you, can you send me I, a do link you use that? it? That'd be cool. Do you use an editing software at all? Not, not until I like... Not for TikTok. I usually use editing software for my um, my YouTube videos, but that's only to like cut, splice, add music. I'm a big advocate um, for like... You, you, should edit, you should edit all your TikTok videos. Agreed. Okay. Um, <clears throat> I'm going to send you two links, Cody, and, and that's the please. two things that yeah, made please, a difference for me, for sure. Yeah, There's another it. reason why you should edit all your TikTok videos as well, though, and it's not just because uh, you can make them better. It's also because you're then forced to watch yourself multiple times. Allow and me to give you a reason, yeah. big reason yeah, there's number There's going to be a point, Doug. Is you can also upload me, to other platforms easily. I'm not inviting so you. You want to catch these hands? Uh, you want to catch these hands? You can upload hands, to Doug? Reels yeah. or yeah. YouTube Shorts. Yeah. I'll catch yeah. those hands when we're okay. having beers in you, Italy, huh? Barm. I'll see you there. Okay. <laughs> Doug, you, you do really well with YouTube Shorts. Like, yeah, very well, I've noticed. Oh, he's been hacking. Oh, yeah, just so just found you on here. There we go. Oh, hey, that's my page. That's Look the channel? That. Yeah, nice. How, nice. how many subs you got there? I think, I think just over 500 now. 552, I'm reading. 552. Yeah, yeah. Cody, Cody, much like yourself, I have a linking ring video that has gone crazy. It's almost at 13 million views. Million. I've seen it. Yeah. And I've that has provided me video. about... That's crazy. It's about 80,000. Well, I love that hmm. video. It's got a big old flash in it and everything, and it's still... It's a, yeah, <laughs> I almost didn't post it. I told Jason that. The day I'm, I posted I'm it... I'm not like, bitter... I'm not bitter about it, but fuck you, Doug. There's something to be said for in- you know what's blowing up now, that- of all things? That stupid stamp trick, that Cranzo coin. It's got almost mm. 100,000 like views in the first I week mean, on YouTube. That it's never a beautiful happened. piece of like that, cool. kit. Mm. It is yeah. a good trick. Well, you, know, you know what, um, though? You know, you know that viral video that uh, Doug was just I like talking about? It. Here's what I like He messaged think. me the night before he posted it, right? Doug messages me the night before he posts it, and he goes, I don't think it's that good. And then he posted it anyway, and now it's been like the main contributor to his success. So I'm like, fire oh, yeah. out. <laughs> that that and the coloring book. Yeah, the coloring, the coloring book. book. That was oh, a yeah. Little yeah. 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 You know, I just I beat oh, my head against the wall with those rings for a day and a half, really, trying to find a clip that I was happy with. Because I'll do that sometimes. I don't, you know, yeah. I don't settle for good. I try to be great. And that one wasn't getting great. And it was, you know, I was like, am I going to do this for two days? And I said, no, I'm going to go with that one. And I guess mm. it, it worked. Yeah, so, I remember you telling me you had the bruised <laughs> pinky from it. Yeah, yeah. Hurt. <laughs> I had hurt myself physically from doing this for six oh hours God. in one Jeez. day. Oh, know? Jesus. Yeah. Jesus. Wow. So, Cody, with the with the baby on the way, have you backlogged a lot of videos to keep your content going? Or do you think you'll take a break? Or are you just going to be like, sorry, baby, stop for a second, keep recording content? Do you have baby a plan? Baby crying in the background. I, I want to be – so, obviously, I want to be a good, as good of a dad as possible. Hmm. Um, and that's going to involve um, – excuse me, that involve posting less – but that also allows me the privilege to include my kid in some of these videos, and it also allows Bro, buy yourself a buy things. yourself a duck box, like, man, a duck bucket. You know what I mean? Those, and then like a big open dove one, open one side, those flash appearances where the dove pops out. Yeah, my baby. Yeah, you can set you can set the pan on fire and then produce a baby. That'd be cool. As I got it, build. Um, <laughs> I don't want to say the name of the product just in case, you know, because this is still public, but like yeah, yeah. Ha- make your baby like do like a 
costume change with your baby so that you're like, oh, you, you vomited on your singlet. Turn them around, turn them around again. Now it's a new singlet. You're like, ah, perfect. Oh, <laughs> I would oh, love oh, the like a Morelli thing. Mm. So many options. So many would, options. Have yeah. you seen the? Uh, have you seen the one like the buzz saw that like <clears throat> you could, like cut your baby in half? Oh yeah. On like what? What about a? Um, That'd be sick as. What about a change bag? Stick. And you put the you put the dirty nappy in the change bag, and then you pull out the fresh nappy. And you're like, ah, oh, great. <laughs> <laughs> a, cha- a change <laughs> bag still like a thing. I thought they were like discontinued a <laughs> hundred years ago. <laughs> Just take a dirty yeah, diaper, but- toss it in like an oversized change bag, pull out a fresh, clean one. Yeah. No, no, get yeah, yourself yeah. a devil a devil's handkerchief, man. You could be like, hey, <laughs> yeah. if you fold it up, you can make a makeshift Ooh, bag. We put the nappy yeah. in and then yeah. gone. The diaper so, is banished. So here's, Maybe, here's the hard I have it, truth, I have it. man. I've As got the it. father right. of three, uh, well, mm. you, Josh, you share. What do you got? What is it? Well, about the- oh, no, I was just going to say this actually could be viral as as AF. What about if, uh, you know, the vanishing bandana? That's what I just like the, said. Like the, ben- with the banana but, is handkerchief. Yeah. So yeah. So use the the devil's handkerchief, but you use you actually re-record the presentation to being the vanishing nappy. So you're folding it up, learning about palming that whole s- stick, and then it's it's gone, or it's you know turned into okay. a new one. That could be that okay. could be. Did I not just fun. say? Did I? I like just I like suggest that this. Like, <laughs> no, I'm going to edit this out. So you said nothing, Jess. The, uh, <laughs> that's definitely nice to know you have another <laughs> original <laughs> idea, Josh. Yeah, I'd be down for that. Yeah, you will have Fish to learn it. magic. Yes. How to palm it. You'll have to palm <laughs> a shitty nappy, but it'll be funny. I, I do want to try. Uh, Especially if you can make like, I, you know how the banana smushes out of it and it falls to the floor? Josh, the jab. You do that with the shit. Yeah. You yeah. can do that with the shit from the nappy. That would be hilarious, dude. Or, proper, or, what, if, or, what, if, or what if you put the dirty nappy in, then you change it, you open it up, and it's a fresh nappy, and then like a, a, a container of like chocolate oh. custard. You're like, oh, I separated the two. Fantastic. And then it and ends then the video, the you're just eating it. Yeah. <laughs> right, you just do a little bit of and then you just eat out of that first. That'd be amazing. Yeah. I'm down for that. No, I love I'm this. I love that. this. I love this. Talk about each. I would. Man. <laughs> I want to yep. try a coloring book routine for her, too. Like, just have, like, my wife hold the baby, and then, like, I just try to, like, read her a story, but, like, you know, the pages are blank. So then, like, you know, snap your fingers and, like, the little. The black and white, and then mm. do it again. And then, like, oh, there's a the color. Now and you, you snap your, your fingers again, and then it's story. porn images, and you're like, oh, wrong book. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah. 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 We'll 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 worry about that when you're older. Okay, we we'll, we'll, we'll have to tell you about that now. That's fine. Wait, where's, yeah. where's the other book? Oh yeah, this, it's supposed to be this book here. Totally not porn. That's I'll tell you this: babies are grabby. Like I, I used to have my kid out on the pitch. I would have someone pick a card, shuffle it up. I'd go to my baby, and they would grab a card out of the deck. I would just classic force mm. it on the baby, mm. you know, and then the baby finds the car. <laughs> so nice. there's a, that's probably better that's than shit diapers. But <laughs> you, yeah, you that could might, do card yeah. to baby. You could do card to baby. She used to have a cute, she had a little card baby suit baby. that had bunny ears. <laughs> she was the best baby pitch baby I ever had. <laughs> nice. And speak, speaking of babies, I baby. had a few. <laughs> Yeah, so Doug, you had, you had some life lessons yeah. to pass on. So first of all, congratulations, because you got the best thing the world has to offer coming your way, a baby, a, a life, Thank a human you very being. Much, Doug. You've accomplished the best thing life has to offer. It doesn't get better than that's, that. That's the best trick you've ever done, my It really friend. is. It's the best thing any human can do. I'm convinced it's the meaning of life. And that's, the one, the, that's the one trick it's okay to repeat. Uh, well, yeah. But uh, yeah not too many two, times, man. Yeah, if you, once you, you do that one 12 on times, you're fucked. In my experience, once the babies outnumber the adults, that's where the problems start. So maybe mm, two's a good yeah. number, especially in this day and age. Yeah. But look, it's hard, man. It's going to be very time consuming. You're going to have a, you, that baby's going to pop out. You're going to love it. It's going to be easy for a month or two, and then it's going to get really hard. So you need to start doing some time management and uh, prepare for that. Yep. But yeah, it's all worth it. And separating, it, separating a day <clears throat> for TikTok. Content well, making, maybe, yeah. maybe, maybe you need a backlog a few a week, right? And this and is where we talk about and, yeah. you know quality. Just trying to focus maybe on that one good one, you know, five days a week. Yes, four. I don't yep. know, whatever. It, maybe there's no number. Maybe it's the number is whatever it needs to be to be good, right? But, well, you want a good example of someone who's uh, who's good at it? There's this uh, Islander dude that I follow who makes videos of like dancing and stuff like that. This guy, I swear, uploads like once a month. And he's got like over a million followers and stuff. Mm. Yeah, and it's just because every video that he makes is really good. Like, oh, wait, that's I so think, gay. That's so gay, man. Dancing videos, really? 
It's not gay if it's in a three-way. Josh, you win. <laughs> Bro, I, I think he likes you. Okay. Yeah, Josh has a, a raging crush. <laughs> 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 wield the power stick. At least now we can actually have some real conversation. So, oh God. Cody, let me ask host. you this: Thanks this, this is a real, this yeah. is a real question. Yeah, Do man. you shave your head or are you just bald? So I shave my head, <laughs> but it's because I started losing my hair at twenty. True. My same hair story. Starts same here. Hair. I lost my hair so, by the time I was twenty-two. I had. I was shaving my head. I was 24, 23, 24 when I started shaving my head. And I did it because when I was like 21, literally 21, like up here, it was just so thin. Yeah. It was ridiculous. So yeah, I'm yeah. like, I'm like, fuck this. I'm just going to do what Britney Spears did in 2007 and just buzz that off. The, the, bless, the blessing is put, put your cigarette out in a baby head. Yeah. Later in life, yeah. unlike Mr. Norbito, you're not going to have hair crisis now. You just, you're done with it. It's over. You know, with. You're moving on. The amount, you don't have to suffer like you know. And what they trying to hold onto his glory is <laughs> the Me, amount you know? of confidence yeah. that I got when I started shaving my head too was insane. Yeah, it's also a like time started, saver. Unlike the hairy brethren we sit with now, we don't have to take our time conditioning and right, cutting. Just, just out of mm. just out of curiosity, Doug. All right, because clearly you don't know what it's like to have a head of hair. It's not you as know? much work as you would think. It's <laughs> all I have to do is, like a regular person, wash myself I mean, in the shower. Know, I was kind of happy <laughs> right? with my fantasy about all the extra minutes I got to practice <laughs> that you didn't because I don't have hair. At least I can do cut and restored hair. I can do cut and restored hair. I can do I can do coin to hair. You know, like I can do all kinds of stuff. What can you do? I can use the glare off of my head to produce a coin. Yeah, and you can do like a matrix. You can do a matrix on your head. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Josh, you should, you should do a matrix. One. I'm thinking about it. Now that I talk about it, it looks pretty dope. Hey, we've been going for over an hour now, so uh, I reckon we put a bow on it. What do you reckon, guys? This has been great Whatever. to chat with I didn't with want everyone. to do this to start with, so we Is can it? stop anytime. <clears throat> Nice, nice. So, look, guys, uh, we'll wrap it up there. Hildebrandt, anything you want to say to our audience? What, what's coming up for you? What's, yeah, um, this is where you pitch yeah. things. Ooh. Get your uh, okay, yeah. cool. So, um, I'm, so I'm going to be taking the next month off, uh, just because of you Makes know the sense. baby. But, but, um, coming in. Uh, uh, wait a minute. September, Are you actually going to take a month off? You're just going to say not doing or? I'm taking. I'm taking a month off from doing shows. I'll put it that way. Okay. Um, I do have some theater stuff in the works coming uh, late uh, late fourth quarter of the year. But I'm also uh, getting ready for another Renaissance Fair from, from Labor Day weekend to Columbus Day weekend. Oh, great. In um, Lebanon, Connecticut. Uh, that's going to be the Connecticut Renaissance Fair. Um, that's, that's my home fair. That's my main mm -hmm. fair. And I'm going to be doing a lot of really fun, really cool stuff then and there. And possibly, maybe, a Comic-Con in Connecticut as well. So we'll see how that goes. Cool. All right. So keep an eye out. We'll put all, we'll pull, put all of Cody's links uh, below as well. You can follow him on his uh, you. YouTube channel too. And, uh, dude, thanks for coming on. This has been great. You know, we were chatting in, in one of our podcasts. And we, we, we brought you up because we were talking about TikTok. And then Doug had all the point. negative. I, Doug had the bright idea and said, you know, we should be having this conversation with him. And you were so kind to actually come on. So this has been yeah, awesome to, to actually to chop it up with you. And um, I'm sure this won't yeah. be the last time. So, all right. Thanks for coming on. And for everyone so listening, thanks, thanks for man. listening good to us with again, you. everyone. Really yeah. Yeah. This is a real privilege. It really was. Thank you, guys. Uh, appreciate Take it. Take care, and, my dude. And uh, all good the best with the baby. Yeah. All right, guys. Catch you next time on Peace. The Magic Guys. Thanks for listening. It's time for us to disappear now. Disappear now. But we'll see you again on the next episode of The Magic Guys.